Good morning, and thank you for joining us for our midweek devotion. It is uh, the fourth day of August in 2022. It's really very hard for me to believe that we're already in the third quarter of this year, but uh, it is a fact that we are, and time just keeps rolling along. And it uh, seems like the older I get, the faster time moves. And I'm sure that that's the way David felt in Psalm 37 as he comes to the end of his life. Most scholars believe anyway, he's coming to the end of his life and he's made some observations that he thinks are important. And I, I think it's important for us too to, uh, to consider uh, what we've learned in life. And David, under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is expressing to us some things that he has learned. There's probably no other Bible character that gives us more insight into himself personally than David does. And that's because of the book of Psalms primarily, where one of the outlets for David in dealing with the issues he had to face in his life was through writing. And he wrote Psalms, he wrote uh, other areas of scripture that we see him in. Uh, we see how David lived his life, how he felt. Uh, we can see him depressed. We can see him uh, very uh, joyful. And in between those two uh, areas of life, which we all go through, David talks about his relationship with the Lord, about his love for the Word of God, his love for the Lord, uh, his love for God's people, for worship, and all of these things. But uh, David had good days and bad days, just like we do. And he's been talking to us here in Psalm 37 about this contrast that he had seen in, in the years of his life between those who who are wicked and by the wicked, he's talking about those who have rejected God's word those who have turned their back on the Lord, have not received the Lord into their life. And so they live their own way with their own uh, set of rules and all the rest of it. He, he looks at those people, and there were many of them in Israel, as there are in every nation. But David was not like that. David was a, a man after God's own heart. He longed for the Word of God. He hungered for a relationship with the Lord. In fact, I read one man who, who called David uh, a God chaser. And I, I just thought that was a wonderful uh, way to express this idea of David being a man after God's own heart. He was chasing after the Lord in his life. Did he do some bad things? Oh, he did. He did some really bad things. But overall in his life, he was a man who was devoted to the Lord, to the Lord's word. And so David makes this contrast between how uh, the, the ungodly live and how a godly person li lives. And that, that's what he's talking about here in, in chapter 37 of the book of Psalms. We ended up last week in verse number 14, and I want to read through verse number 19 today, beginning at verse 15. Speaking of the wicked, David says, their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall not they shall be satisfied. Just a couple of observations that I want to make about what what David had said. Uh, just the way God has set up the world in the sense of, of sowing and reaping. And that's not I mean, David isn't quoting this here, but that particular verse in Galatians. But he does allude to it in verse number 15, where he's talking about the wicked who have drawn their sword against the poor and against the upright. 
They, they see those people who follow the Lord as enemies. And in, in many respects, they are enemies and they are, they are enemies of, of lying. They are enemies of unrighteousness. And this is the way these people have chosen to live their lives. And, and so David said they've, they've drawn the sword. They've bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy to slay such as to be of um, upright conversation or upright living. And in verse 15, he, he says, their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bows shall be broken. And essentially what he's saying is that the wicked are going to be destroyed by their own wickedness. And we can see this in, in the world today. I mean, a man sows what, or reaps what he sows. And and David says, one thing I've observed is that the wicked are destroyed by their own wickedness. That's the way God has set up the, the world. We reap what we sow. And if I choose in my life, as a pattern of my life, to mistreat the poor, mistreat the righteous, fight against them, then that is going to, at some point, come back against me and destroy me. And, and I think we have to keep that in mind as, as a believer today, as we go out into the world. I mean, people may mistreat us. They probably will. They will say things about us, especially if we are seeking to, to live a good, righteous, God-fearing life. Most people don't appreciate that because, because that kind of life indicts the life that they have lived. And, and so they fight against us. And David goes on in verse number 16, and he says, a little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. You know, that's important for us, I think, to, to, to stop and think about this for a minute. This past week, somebody here in Illinois won the lottery, $1.3 billion. Can you imagine that? $1.3 billion. And, and somebody told me this week, well, but they won't get to keep all of it. No, they'll only get to keep about $700 million of it. And all of us look at that and we say, wow, man, you know, I could live on that. Uh, you know, it would certainly be a life-changing thing, wouldn't it, to win that much money? And, and just so you know, I didn't play, you know, I didn't, I didn't play. So, uh, most believers probably did not play. But, uh, anyway, you know, to sit there with, let's say, $700 million at your disposal, David says, if you don't win the lottery, if you don't have a lot of stuff, if you are a believer in Christ, you are in a better position than someone who won the lottery. Many people who may have won the lottery, if you combine all of the riches that they have gained in that, you are in a better position than that those people who have won who do not know the Lord and do not follow Jesus Christ. You say, well, you know, I, I don't, I don't know if you, if I agree with that. Well, let me tell you why you should agree with that. And that is because that we live a lifespan of about 70 to 80 years. And all of that money, what are you going to do with $700 million? Well, you might buy a new house, new car, you might quit your job, you might do all of these things. But the point that David is making is that one of these days, life will end. Then what? One of these days, every single one of us, righteous and unrighteous, whoever we happen to be, 
how wealthy we happen to be, how much stuff we happen to have. One of these days, we're going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, and we're going to give an account of our life. And I think that one of the first questions that is going to be asked of us is, what did you do with my son, Jesus Christ? And I may stand there with all of my millions. I may stand there with all of my possessions. But if I say and have to say, I lived my life without you. I did not want to follow you. I did not want to obey your law. If I have to stand there like that, as compared to the man who has very little, who says, I longed to follow you in obedience. I longed to know you. I followed hard after you. In, in that moment, in the comparison between those two people, the one with the greater benefit and the greater wealth, really, is the man who lived his life with little, but he had a heart that longed after God. David said, a little, just a little, that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. You know, people live, they get famous, they die, they have wealth and all the rest of it. We read about them all the time in the papers, hear it on the news. But my question is always this, did they know Christ? Did they follow the Lord? Sure, they were rich. Sure, they were famous. They were all of the things that the world says we must have and we must be in order to enjoy life. But in that moment, when they closed their eyes, when they breathed their last, and when their spirit departed from their body, did they stand in the presence of, of the Lord? And the reason that's important is because at that moment, all that they had gained on earth is left behind. And what awaits them is an eternity, and that eternity is either going to be in heaven or in hell. There is no in-between. There is no purgatory. There is no chance beyond this life to follow the Lord. And so David says, even a little bit that a person who follows the Lord has puts them in a better position in the end, in the ultimate. It puts them in a better position than the riches of many wicked I think we ought to think about that. And if you are listening to me today and you don't know Christ, consider the fact that one day, and it may be sooner than you think, one day you too will stand before the Lord. And when he asks that question, how will you be able to honestly answer? Father, I pray today that you would help us to pursue you instead of pursuing riches and that we would desire above everything else to know you, to follow you, and to be one of your children, rather than seeking after the pleasures and treasures of this earth. Bless our day. Help us to stay focused upon you, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. See you next week.